Hello, this is Mike Burek. I'm the host and producer of a monthly podcast series called Made in Ukraine Tech Startup Edition. But today we have a special video version of it called Made in Ukraine Tech Town Hall. And I'm pleased to see, say that we're going to be speaking today about a report from East West Digital News on startup and investment and innovation uh, in Eastern Europe, in the CEE countries. And so we have with us today uh, the editor in chief of that report and also the co founder of East West Digital News and Ukraine Digital News, Adrian Henney. Uh, we also have with us uh, Yulia Sichakova, who is an associate, associate with A Ventures, uh, one of the major venture capital companies in Ukraine. And she did a lot of the analysis and overview specifically for Ukraine. So we'll have her talking about that section of it. And then finally, we have Olga Athanasiva, who is the executive director of the Ukrainian Venture Capital Association. And uh, she will round up our discussion today by chatting a little bit about her views on the report, some of the things that she might have found particularly interesting and uh, also inject any questions with our speakers. So Adrian, with that in mind, uh, I'd like to turn it over to you. Maybe you could start off initially just giving us some background on the East West Digital News Report, not the report, but rather the company and the organization, how it was founded and why. Well, it was founded back seven years ago. When I was working in a venture fund in Eastern Europe, in Russia more exactly, and I could, uh, I could see that there was a growing interest from international business circles in, 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 in Russian and, and Central and Eastern European startups and the tech scene, but a, a desperate lack of information available in English language. If you could speak the local languages, for example, Russian or Polish, you could rather easily get information about the startup for these, these events, but if you didn't, it was simply impossible. So hence the idea of creating an, an information resource with news stories, with reports, industry reports, uh, in English, uh, quality content about the digital scenes of these countries, uh, but for an international audience. So this is how we created the company in Russia in 2011. Then a few years later, we started covering Ukraine, creating Ukraine Digital News. And our latest initiative, the report you were referring to, it's not even a report, it's a research study because it's huge. Uh, it took us one year to investigate 24 countries of the region, Russia, Ukraine, but also the Baltic states, Poland, the Balkans, etc., etc. So this is our latest initiative, a research study that offers um, uh, insights, market data about all the, these countries from the startup and venture points of view. Great, thank you for that introduction. So maybe now you could share with our audience some of the highlights and uh, the overview of the report. Well, um, probably the first thing to say is that uh, there is no, uh, nothing like Central and Eastern Europe from the point of view of startups and venture investment because the region is very diverse with a, a very big contrast between different levels of development of these ecosystems between the volumes of startups and investments etc etc there's nothing to 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 you cannot compare montenegro which where which is small by size uh, and where venture and activity is almost in existence uh, with a country like uh, poland estonia or russia or ukraine where there are plenty of startups and where venture activity is more significant so from the first thing to say is that uh, there are, there's a, a variety of local situations rather than uh, one region that would, that would be a kind of unified, pic offer a unified picture. This was the first thing to say. Perhaps there's another thing to say with, uh, to, to summarize it, uh, if it can be summarized. Um, I would call it the paradox of Eastern Europe, of Central and Eastern Europe. Because on the one hand, there is undoubtedly a very strong 
technical, intellectual, educational basis. And many startups do really brilliant things at the, you know, the, the, the world-class level. So this is on the one side, and, and, and people know about it. People heard about the, the, these genius uh, Ukrainian or Russian or Estonian entrepreneurs or programmers. They have some kind of reputation worldwide for their technical excellence. Uh, so this is on the one side. On the other side, the other side of the paradox is that uh, there is extremely few investment, investment deals. Uh, this, the, the venture capital market in the region including Russia, which is the biggest piece, is less than 1% of the global venture market. And even in Russia, uh, the largest country from this point of view, uh, it's less than $1 billion per year. And if you compare this with the United States or China, which range in the dozens of billion dollars per year, or even Western Europe, which is about $15 uh, billion per year, it's it, the, the figures are really ridiculously low. So there's this contract, contrast between, on the one hand, this technological excellence, and on the other hand, the very low level so far of, of, of venture investment. Adrian, this, let me stop you there for a moment. So why do you think that is at this point? Is it simply because uh, these countries have not been uh, innovating as long as some of the Western countries? Uh, is it that Western venture capital firms and investment companies haven't paid much attention to what's happening in Eastern Europe? W what would you say would be the major reason? Perhaps the first reason is that, you know, there is a legacy of the past there. There is a legacy, a positive legacy of the past in terms of engineering of the communist past that, uh, that, 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 that benefits to many countries of the region. And everyone heard about uh, the Soviet technical ex excellence in certain fields, with rockets and all these insti research institutes. So this is a reality. But this, until recently, this didn't really, um, uh, this wasn't really materialized in the form of, I would call that Silicon Valley innovation, style, Silicon Valley style innovation, with the startups and VC model. There's nothing to do with uh, an even strong, even, even a strong uh, research facility and the Silicon Valley model. So this model is really recent in, in the region. There was virtually no venture activity 10 years ago in most countries of the region. I remember when I came to Moscow in 2009, there was just one startup incubator in the whole city. So uh, one factor is the recency of all that. Uh, another factor is that uh, there's not a lot of, 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 of locally available venture capital. Uh, and on the other hand, international investors do not really come to the region. Some of them do, and some of them do good business there, but it's, it's, it's small numbers again. So the, the venture capital is not really available so far in big volumes. Uh, but this is all progressing because if you see the progress of these local ecosystems in terms of startup and VC ecosystems over the last five years, it has been tremendous, exceptional, and very fast over the last couple of years in many of these countries. Interesting. And I know you have a few slides, actually graphics, that really illustrate these points. Yeah, look, this is this, the, 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 the map of the region. Uh, that shows the contrasts between the different countries. There are two small countries, which are Estonia and Slovenia, uh, whose level of, I would say, maturity of the local startup ecosystem and the volumes of venture investment, at least in, in relative terms, in per capita terms, are comparable to those of Western Europe. Uh, and then you have other countries uh, the ones that are in, 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 in lighter colors, in, 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 in less uh, uh, red colors, I would say, uh, that are, um, I would say, a little bit less mature or record a much lesser volumes of venture investment. So this is an illustration of the diversity of this, of this region. Then 
when I was saying that uh, venture capital investment in the region is nothing compared to other regions of the world, here's the numbers. It's $70 billion approximately per year in the United States. And in Central and Eastern Europe, excluding Russia, this is $600 million. So it's ridiculous, this little green thing. Then Russia uh, was $900 million, less than $1 billion in 2016. So you see, it's really uh, um, insignificant on the global map. However, there is an exception. Uh, the, this region, Central and Eastern Europe, and in particular Russia, have done a, a huge uh, uh, proportion of the of the of the of the amounts raised in ICOs last year, I mean, huge uh, twenty percent, around twenty percent. It's 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 much more than the less than one percent of their of what they represent on the global VC uh, map. So it's less than one percent of global VC investment, but around twenty percent of ICO investment. So. This is why uh, when we're talking about the technological maturity of these countries, it really depends on which countries you're talking about, which kind of technologies and which kind of investment you're talking about. There's a lot of diversity in, this, in, this, uh, in these matters. Adrian, I had one final question for you and then we're gonna turn it over to Yulia. What about the so-called brain drain that's going on in Eastern Europe? Uh, do you feel at this point that um, Eastern Euro Europe is losing its best and its brightest because a lot of the startups are actually establishing themselves, particularly in the United States and Silicon Valley. Certainly it's an issue. Uh, and it's not only a, a brain drain for the most talented tech people or, or other categories of people. In certain countries, there's even a decline in, in the population. Uh, I think Moldova in this case, is in this case, uh, and Russia was in this case in the 90s, and the population is also stagnating. So it's a real demographic issue for some of these countries that goes even, uh, that is much larger than this, just the question of the brain drain of, 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 of the tech people or entrepreneurs. But if we're talking about these in particular, uh, this is an issue, uh, and uh, in certain countries, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a very important proportion of the of the local um, entrepreneur community, tech entrepreneur community, who go to other countries, who who uh, either travel all the time, but many of them even try to emigrate or succeed in their immigration project and go to Silicon Valley or Berlin or such uh, attractive uh, uh, hotspots on the global tech map. Uh, and in, in Silicon Valley, there's a, a, a considerable community of Russian-speaking uh, people from, from Russia or Ukraine, or, and some of them, as, as everyone knows, has, have created or participated in the creation of, of, of global giants like uh, PayPal or even Google in a certain sense. Um, so uh, there is this brain drain, which is due to the fact that the you know, there are positive reasons because they are attracted by, by the, the prosperity and the, and the dynamism of these uh, of Silicon Valley and some Western European or even Asian hotspots. Uh, and there are negative reasons it's because in their homeland and their country of origin, the, the markets are too small to develop a startup. And sometimes the local conditions are not favorable. You cannot raise as much money as you can in, in Silicon Valley, for example, as we said. And in certain cases, the local social and political context is a little bit discouraging or even appalling. So this is, this is a problem for many of these countries. But, and I will finish with these words, it's not entirely negative because many of these entrepreneurs, when they go to the United States, for example, they do not necessarily cut all links with the countries of origin. Uh, some of them, after they, they, they earn, they become millionaires, for example, they would they would create startups or support startups in their own country, you know. Uh, and this is typically the Skype uh, in Estonia. Uh, the founders of Skype played a very important role in the, in the development of the local Estonian ecosystem. Once they had earned their millions or billions of dollars, 
they really helped the local ecosystem to develop. Adrian, thanks so much for sharing those thoughts with us, particularly about the brain drain. Uh, you can take yourself off screen share now, and we are going to go over to Yulia Sichikova to give us some specifics about Ukraine and the startup environment and investment and so forth. So, Yulia? Hi. Okay, so um, talking about Ukraine, I can definitely agree with Adrian that maybe in Eastern Europe, the investment volume is not that you know, it's not that huge, it's not that big in comparison with Silicon Valley. But when it comes to Ukraine, the investment volume is really picking up. And for um, when we look at our country, we consider it actually the 2017 year has hit the record amount of investment. So um, things are going uh, quite well uh, here. Um, and I think uh, um, I would like to highlight a few trends uh, why Ukraine is doing so well in the uh, innovation, VC, and uh, tech startup ecosystem. So one thing that um, you should know about Ukraine is that uh, it's really uh, started as an outsourcing nation. So Ukraine has a strong foundation of outsourcing of service companies, uh, in particular IT uh, outsourcing. So um, that, um, so the outsourcing uh, was kind of like a base for the emergence of the product uh, companies over the, over the past uh, few years in particular. And what we see as investors in the market is that uh, in particular last year, uh, the capitalization and maybe even the revenue generated by the product companies exceeded the uh, capitalization and the revenue uh, generated by outsourcing companies for the first time in history. So uh, today, Ukraine boasts thousands of startups a dozen of local investment funds that invest into tech, and a growing number of foreign funds participated in the rounds of Ukrainian product companies. Um, so although uh, I can also say that Ukraine um, uh, by population is not the first, uh, is not the largest country in Europe, but in terms of the number of IT professionals, Ukraine is the largest. And um, we have around 100,000 IT professionals in the country, which is the largest number in uh, Eastern Europe and in, Euro in Europe as a whole. So that gives us kind of an advantage in how fast the country moves in terms of innovation. Um, and um, you can see that um, Ukraine has a number of local funds that invest quite actively. Among them is our fund is Adventures Capital, uh, but we also have other funds that uh, invest mostly at the seed and series A uh, stage. Adrian mentioned correctly that the VC money still remains you know, a bottleneck, but the number of funds is growing and it's uh, slightly changing. And when the local money cannot support the local startups, uh, there come the international investors. And over the years, we have seen a significant number, a significant increase in the funding that comes from the foreign uh, funds. So, for example, uh, last year, in 2017, we had Ukrainian uh, company Grammarly, which was founded by Ukrainian, and they have a large uh, R&D office here in Ukraine. Uh, they raised 110 million in uh, VC funding from uh, mostly foreign investors, such as General Catalyst and Spark and, and a few others. So by the number of deals, I think that local investors still dominate as they support the local ecosystem at the seed level. But by the uh, money committed, we can say that definitely foreign investors uh, dominate that market. Although um, I also should mention that in most of the rounds, in most of the cases, foreign investors uh, syndicate deals with the local investors. So they want to see that the company that's coming from Ukraine is supported by the local ecosystem. That gives them peace of mind and they, that also gives them kind of um, an indicator that this company is known at the local market and they have somebody at the local market who could, who could help um, resolve any issues. Um, 
So uh, in 2016, for example, um, the companies originated from Ukraine, founded by Ukrainian companies, raised more than $88 million in funding. And we already have some preliminary data for the last year. The number is, uh, the number exceeds 250 million. So year on year, the investment into Ukrainian startups grew by more than 200%, which is, which is a great start. Um, in terms of the uh, sectors, uh, we can say that um, that um, local investors as well as foreign investors, they invest across all sectors, but uh, the most popular are software, software as a service models, uh, marketplaces, uh, consumer tech, um, but uh, we cannot identify any particular sector you know, that, that's uh, really uh, dominant except for software. Overall, we have over 31 uh, tech funds that operate in Ukraine. Uh, that includes 17 VC funds and 8 B funds and a few incubators. Um, we also have a U Angels uh, network, uh, which uh, has more than uh, which has about 37 uh, members, and we know that uh, the angels in Ukraine invested. 3.5 million in 2016. We already know that that number was very similar to the investment uh, in 2017 as well. Uh, so over the, the last few years, the angels invested more than $10 million into Ukrainian startups. When it comes to particular deals, I already mentioned Grammarly that raised quite a large um, Around uh, last year, we also know that Petcube, uh, disclosure, our portfolio company, raised one of the largest uh, Series A in Ukraine, which was which exceeded ten million dollars uh, from local and foreign funds. Um, when it comes to mergers and acquisitions, uh, uh, we had in 2015. Uh, I'm sure many know that Ukrainian startup Luxury was acquired by Snapchat for. $150 million, and we also had a few outsourcing companies acquired by European strategics as well. Um, and last year, uh, Ukrainian markets saw five exits, but most of them were undisclosed, so I cannot really speak at freedom about that. Yulia, can I ask you a question here? Sure. So to date, uh, was Luxury the largest acquisition in terms of dollar volume? When it comes to product companies, yes. So product companies, uh, like startup companies, yes, that was the largest acquisition today. But I'm sure that Ukraine will see its first unicorn in the in the next few years. That was going to be my next question. <laughs> it's definitely coming, and we see that you know Ukrainian startups already raised a lot of uh, capital from foreign funds, like Grammarly. You can assume that. <laughs> Maybe Grammar will be the first unicorn, but may, there are a few other. There were a few other uh, rounds last year, which, which remain undisclosed, but they were quite big. So uh, we have a few candidates for the unicorn position in the next few years. I would like to say a word on this, if possible. May I say a word on it, on this? Yeah, sure, Adrian, go ahead. Uh, this is an, a very good example. Luxury is a very good example of an acquisition of a local company in the region from a huge international company, uh, a tech giant. This is not the only example. Uh, we can cite uh, Skype from Estonia, um, uh, Avito from Russia, which is the leading um, uh, classified site, which was bought for uh, more than $2 billion two or three years ago by uh, South Africa's NASPERS. Um, there, are other there are other examples like that. There are also Masquerade that was bought by Facebook from Belarus. Uh, so uh, this clearly indicates and that, that the region can do and is, 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 is able, is capable to produce remarkable products. And each of these moves, each of these acquisitions had uh, an, a very important effect on, I would say, a psychological effect on the local ecosystems because they came as a as a sort of of of, of demonstration of, of 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 that you you are not creating all this you're not working for nothing. There's some hope to attract attention from international investors and even the biggest ones. So indeed, it's very important that you mention 
this luxury case it ex really exemplifies the first generation of 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 mega acquisitions, if I dare say, uh, because it's still startups uh, from the region. Thanks, Adrian. Yulia, I have one final question for you about Ukraine. So what is changing now that we're seeing more startups rather than having uh, a Ukrainian techs just working for outsourcing? What, you know, what, what is going on in the environment that's uh, kind of propelling the millennial generation to start to look their own, to set up their own companies? Well, first of all, I think that um, when it comes to startups, the quality of startups is getting better. Um, I think this is mostly due to the fact that um, the whole ecosystem is getting a little bit more mature. It still is in its nascent stages when we compare it to Silicon Valley. But still, a year from year, we see a growing number of startups, but also the startups of the higher quality. A lot of the companies, actually, a lot of the best companies, uh, they first kind of break even. <laughs> and then when they realize that they need to grow really fast, they raise the capital. So um, this speaks to the kind of stability of, of the best Ukrainian companies. They, if, they, if they have a goal to become like top three companies, they need to raise the, the VC money. If they want to continue to grow, they can do so without attracting the capital. And this is also due to the um, internal, the way the internal ecosystem uh, set up the um, the, the uh, prices for um, IT labor in Ukraine and the cheap taxes that Ukrainian companies are paying here um, in the IT sector. In terms of the other parts of the ecosystem, uh, of course, Ukraine has a lot of um, uh, events uh, organized by the VCs, organized by associations. A few years ago, we didn't have the associations of the VCs and angels. Now we do have that. And that the communication flow enabled to create higher quality of the investors and the startups as well. And right. also, um, you know, the increasing number of Ukrainian startups raise money from the foreign VCs and since Ukraine doesn't have many incubators, uh, they, uh, the Ukrainian companies tend to go abroad for the incubation to different accelerators where they have access to top mentors. So when they come back to Ukraine and manage the companies from here, they bring the expertise from abroad. Very interesting. Well, thank you so much for that overview on Ukraine and what's happening there in terms of startup companies. Olga, you've been waiting patiently in the wings back there. So we'd like to get your viewpoint on the report, um, some of the interesting things you found in the report, and in general, your view from the, from the VC position, or at least an association for VCs, on what's happening with uh, startups in Ukraine. Thank you, Michael. Uh, well, my, my um, short speech would be more philosophical, uh, probably, from the point of view of um, association and uh, from the point of view of the group of venture capitalists and uh, other funds. Uh, well, of course, my favorite part of report, which I find uh, very useful, and I will tell about it later, is uh, about Ukraine, uh, because, well, um, we work mostly uh, in here and for it. And uh, I, I would say that it is very important uh, well, this report is very important because it helps to uh, do our work in changing perception about Ukraine. Um, in global community, especially uh, also in tech community, um, in different countries, there is still a perception um, among people that they get from the media and uh, so on. But um, invest, but people from investors' world like numbers, and uh, well, we can show them. We can show that. Um, Ukraine is a strong partner. There are a lot of companies out of Ukraine. Uh, other people from Ukraine and from other countries do invest here. And I think the same thing is for, for other countries from the CE region. So um, if people do it, if uh, top funds do it, so join and do it together. So um, that's why, no, that's why, but uh, this is uh, one of the things why, uh, well, syndicated deals are very popular, so very widespread current days uh, in particular in our country so um this you know like this uh, information 
uh, which is contained in the, the market overviews in, in, the, in the current report, uh, helps people to, um, you know, like to, to, to make the move to uh, push them towards uh, the region. Um, also, basically, uh, it helps us to educate, if I can use this word, world on what Ukraine is, on uh, what sea region is, and uh, uh, that we have several companies that are globally well-known, um, and they are out of Ukraine. Uh, basically, many people just don't know about uh, what was mentioned earlier, the founders of PayPal, some of the founders of uh, Google. Well, also, we can say that Luxury and Petcube are quite known in a um, certain uh, extent. Uh, I find this report uh, very comprehensive, and I like that it covers many fields, um, not only venture capital, but in, but in particular ICO, which is uh, definitely blooming this uh, this months and this years, I would say. Um, especially, it is important for our region and in particular for Ukraine, uh, because uh, recently was published uh, some slides from the report of the, net the network hotbeds of blockchain by Dot Tapscott and the Citibank. And uh, Ukraine is in top 12, if I'm not mistaken, countries uh, which are hot in blockchain. So um, all this is. Uh, like also mentioned in the report. Um, the other thesis I would like to mention is that it is very important to position Ukraine as a part of CE region, not only separately, but as a part of the, um, I would say, the new uh, community uh, of countries uh, emerging Europe. Um, a year ago, I was nominated by Financial Times and Google um, in the New Europe 100 list, which united uh, well people like change makers from uh, particularly emerging European countries. And this initiative is uh, focuses uh, on like similar thing to unite uh, to to show the power of uh, of the region of CE countries, uh, and our states together have uh, a lot more power with the available uh, potential than separately. Uh, in this regard, the research demonstrates uh, this unity in their diversity, as Andrea mentioned earlier. Great. Thank you so much for all your feedback on this. Adrian, I'm going to give you the last word. So if our audience wants to download the report, I understand the report is free. Where can they go and get it? Yes, it is free. And uh, uh, there are plenty of topics, plenty of data, and uh, plenty of things that are uh, that will help international players, be they investors or entrepreneurs, to get a better understanding of the region and, and to do business there and to find partners. So uh, you can go to, uh, there's a special website where you can download the report for free, which is cee.ewdn.com, cee.ewdn.com. Great, thank you so much. And my thanks to everyone here for getting together for this discussion today about the uh, EWDN report on startup investment and innovation in uh, the CEE countries. Uh, Adrian Henney, chief editor and co-founder of East West Digital News. Uh, Yulia Sichikova, associate with, uh, with um, A Ventures, which is a venture capital firm in Kiev, Ukraine, and Olga Afanasyeva, who is executive director of the Ukrainian Venture Capital uh, Association. So until next time, that's all for now. <laughs>